at Abel. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the session that we, we're going to have with Dr. Dr. George. Lord Jesus, I pray that let your hand of grace be upon Dr. George in the name of Jesus. We are fruitful because we are in you, Lord. And Father God, without you, we can't bear any fruit. Heavenly Father, I pray that as Dr. George is going to minister today, is going to share today your heart, O oh Lord, that my God, let your goodness, let your power, let your anointing be upon his life. Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, that whatever he is going to share this evening, that let your hand of grace, let your goodness, Lord, let your anointing, let your power be manifested upon his life. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, as this recording is continuing, that after he has ministered, Lord, he'll be so amazed that other things that he has said, he, he, he didn't even think or he didn't even prepare them because the Holy Spirit speaking through him. Father God, we want to thank you and honor you and give you all. What a privilege, Lord, to have this session. Good Father, what a, a privilege to have this session, Lord. We don't take it lightly. We, 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 we mm -hmm. highly esteem this moment, Lord, and want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity. In the most wonderful and most powerful name of Jesus, I thank you, my Lord. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> Abel, it's it's uh, no coincidence that you said that that the Holy Spirit would even give me things that I didn't prepare because I just prayed that about ten minutes ago. Wow! Holy Spirit, I have I have an outline, but Holy Spirit, have your way and give me things even I am not prepared for or didn't prepare in advance. So we're in agreement for the Holy Spirit to have His way. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, Nancy, so we have some pre-questions. Do you want me to to pray and share a little, or you just want to get into the Let, questions? Let's do the pre-questions, pre and here they yes. come, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and launch that, and just there's just a couple of them. If you'll answer these questions, and then, George, I think we need a, a, you to sing a song here while they do that. <laughs> Let's see, I'll put on my uh, singing voice. Oh, it's not there. Well, Father, we give you the glory for each one here and what you're doing, Lord, as we walk in your light and we be the light that you created us to be. And we just thank you how you took us out of the miry clay and put us in your marvelous light, Lord, that we are walking in the spirit, living by the spirit, fueled by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we just give you the glory and the praise and honor all of our days, Father. We thank you of the suddenlies. We thank you for the surprises. And Lord, just like little children full of faith, we look to you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy to overflow in abundance and an outpouring of your glory that would fill us to overflow, that it would cause us and compel us to reach out to those around us, Lord, our neighbors, our family, our friends, whether close by geographically or far away electronically, Lord, that we dedicate and consecrate our lives for your service, for worshiping you, for fulfilling what you created us to do, for you are faithful in every measure, in every life, to complete the good work that you started in us, Lord. And we just thank you and praise you forever and ever. Holy is the Lamb. There we go. So how do we see? First off, um, last week, I hope you all saw Dr. Louis Blom's um, presentation. It was very powerful. And he talked about 
fulfilling the Great Commission and how do we do that? And he talked about the what. This week, we're going to examine the how and the why. Those go hand in hand. And Jesus said, if the eye is single, the whole body is filled with light. We are vessels of light. It's been shown uh, with the frequencies and scientific studies about the, the vibrations, the frequency, the light that we emit. And some people emit more light than others, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. And also, how do we speak? I love Job 22, 28, who also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you. And we want to look at his light in several areas and arenas, the light of his majesty revealed and the deepening delight of oneness. And that's why I asked the question about what does oneness mean to you? It means many things to many people. We all have a different perception, a different lens of how we see things. But I would say that all probably, most assuredly, all of us see what we see correctly as light in the darkness coming from the glory of the Lord. And we want to look at some examples and some scriptures that help reinforce the bigness of God and his majesty and his sovereignty, and how he has watched over creation from before he created it till the end of this age and every detail in our life. I spoke with one of our people um, late this morning, Dr. Pamela Harrison, who's up in northern North Carolina near the Virginia border in Mount Airy, and she shared a powerful testimony of how the Holy Spirit spoke to her and the intercessors in prayer about um, a, a shooter, a live shooter on the streets of Mount Airy, North Carolina. And they prayed against it and they prayed into it. And they prayed for the, the shooter to have a change of heart. And truly, as the Holy Spirit leads, disaster can be averted. And we are seeing disasters on the right, on the left and all around us, around the world. And we have the ability, as we hear the seven spirits of God and we obey, that we can step into and change the spiritual atmosphere by seeing what he shows us, hearing what he speaks or what he whispers, and then declaring with our mouth what his plans are. And so they had a vision of a, of a mass shooter on the street shooting people at point blank range. And they took action and they prayed and they prayed in the spirit. And a, a young man had showed up at their online prayer meetings. And Dr. Pamela saw something of the Lord on this man's life and spoke to him and welcomed him in. And he had some knowledge of the word, knowledge of the spirit. And then a few days or a week later, the police put out a bulletin that they had um, a, a witness say that they heard this man who turned out to be that young man that came to their Bible meeting that they were forewarned about in a time of intercession before they even met him. And uh, Pamela knew she was being um, awakened to the Lord's plans specifically for her and her group for this young man. And they arrested the young man and he was in jail. And because she's ordained and she happens to be ordained with CMM, she was able to uh, talk with the police because she had relations with the police department. The police chief and the mayor are Christians and they allowed her group to pray with them and for them, and they welcomed them into the jail. And it was just an amazing series of events that happened. And she described it as this young man was having a Saul to a Paul conversion. And I told her that this is really God's grace that that man was in jail. And she laughed and she said she told him 
the same thing, that this is God's love for him that spared him from this tra tragedy, perhaps even suicide or murder. And um, so it was an amazing report of God's people, just like you and me, being on assignment where the Lord has us to, to go into action, first in prayer by the Spirit, and then proactive um, spiritual into the practical application of God's principles of his love and his mercy, uh, for he is the God of restoration. So he's moving all around us, and he orders our steps. And I, I stand in awe, I know that we all do together, of his majesty and his love for us. And it's amazing when we notice sometimes years or decades later of how God was there at that moment in that uh, fork in the road of our lives, even when we're young children. With God, all things are possible. And he said to go into all the world. And at times that can seem a bit overwhelming. I love uh, Nancy's art here. Um, and I love this scripture I saw in the Passion Translation a few days ago. I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway of your life. I would advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you where you've not been before. Don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. So, Lord, we just surrender now and we submit ourselves to your plans and purposes. And even if you have to tug me and push me along, Lord, have your way, because I don't want my stubborn stiff neck or my hard heart to prevent you from accomplishing all that you desire for your glory, not for, for myself, Lord, but for your glory and your purposes in every area of life. Behold the timeless, expansive extravagance of this oneness of Yahweh. Here we see a, a picture of people hungering and worshiping the Lord. And just imagine throughout the ages, the, the people, the faces, the hearts, the, the cries, the travailing tears, crying out for God that there must be an answer. There must be hope. There must be you, Lord, our creator, our maker. And our only hope is in Jesus Christ, the Lord. So, Lord, we pray for the lost souls, for the hungry ones, those that don't know you yet. Father, use us to help do our part to complete the great commission for your glory. And, Lord, show us more about what Jesus said. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And how we can see with eyes of faith, Lord, the completed work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Lord, that, that faith is something we all want to walk more in, for we know without faith it's impossible to please God. And we know your word also says that anything that's not done in faith is sin. And Lord, we don't want to sin. Lord, help us to not sin by growing in our faith, in our our devotion and our surrendered, yielded, laid down lives to you alone, Lord. And Lord, help us to understand about faith. We don't have to know how you're going to do something. We just need to know that you will do it. And Lord, we know in your word that is this completed work of the Great Commission being fulfilled in eternity now. And Lord, help us to understand that nothing is impossible with you, Lord. We just need to know that you have done it. You have completed the work. And Jesus, when you return to earth, you will see faith. Lord, change us. Um, gear us up in our faith like a muscle, Lord, that we would exercise it continually, that we would uh, day by day, moment by moment, hunger for more of you, that, that our faith would, would drive this hunger into your loving arms. And Lord, we know that we're already there in eternity, for we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Lord, I ask for 
the fresh deepening revelation of all that you created us for and all that you plan and how you are even working now weaving your um, majestic tapestry with the royal threads of purple and silver of faith and red of the blood of Jesus and help us to understand um, and open our minds, open uh, the eyes of our heart to see, Father, what you desire for us to see. And I believe even during this time, something is going to happen to um, open our spiritual eyes in a deeper and a greater way. Romans 12, we read, for as in one physical body, we have many parts, organs and members, and all these parts do not have the same function or use. So we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, the Messiah. And individually, we are parts of one another, mutually dependent on one another. Rejoice with those who rejoice sharing others' joy, and weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. There is a lot of um, heartache and woe in the world today of, of uh, hunger, physical hunger, lack of water to drink, people that are just thirsty, uh, people that are dying from disease, millions of children that die from unsafe water, um, not having access to good quality uh, health care that can be trusted, uh, wars, rumors of war, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, disease, some man-made, some natural. And I was reading in, in Luke um, 11 or 12 this morning about Jesus' own words, talking about the, the, um, the end times, but th that it is not time yet, and it is not time now, for he is awakening his body, his army, to be in, in lockstep. I think the Hebrew word is hamush, um, or kamush, not sure how to say it, but as the Hebrews were coming out of, of Egypt, and Pharaoh's army was chasing them, and the raging waters of the sea were before them, and they were in disarray. But then they got in lockstep, I believe, in an instant into martial array, and they each took their place as one body as they marched into the raging waters with the Judah praisers going first. And when they, I can picture their, their, their first foot going up in the air and the water was raging, but when their, uh, that foot came down, it landed on dry ground in an instant. The Lord can arrange his body, his army around the world as the captain of the host of the army that Jesus is into a lockstep, into the twinkling of an eye, there would be an order. In 1 Corinthians 12, 26, and if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. If one member is honored, all the members share in the enjoyment of it. Now you collectively are Christ's body and individually you are members of it, each part severally and distinct, each with his own place and function. So I pray that our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit would increase in a manifold way this year, and that our sensitivity to other members in the body of Christ would also parallel that growth in increasing sensitivity to be aware of the body of Christ, that we are we are one part and we are interdependent, first of all, and, and as a priority, we are dependent on the Lord God Almighty above all else, who is our maker, our creator, our sustainer, our defender, our supply, our all in all. And yet he wants us to understand what Jesus felt in his heart when he understood the body that he was the head of, and he still is the head of. The holy fear of the Lord will need to increase in the body in the days ahead for many reasons. I've listed just a few. Our own devotion to the Lord, our maturity, our fullness, our joy, 
I think Emily mentioned the other day, even our survival, and that's very true. Unity, not superficial, callous unity, but deep unity that Jesus spoke about in John 17, that we would be one as he and the Father are one. Uh, awakening, a reformation that's needed in every nation. And it's coming, and we're seeing the ebbs and flows of it. And the enemy fights hard. The enemy knows it's defeated. But we, as God's people, we know that we have the victory. We don't have to know as we walk in faith, as children of his light, as uh, vessels of clay, we don't have to know how he's going to do it. I think many of us get hung up on how's it going to happen, but we just need to know that he's done it, he did it, and he is doing it in reverse order chronologically, so to speak, that the faith of God is that it's, it's finished, it's done. That which he set out to do is done. And sometimes we make it seem more difficult than it needs to be. If we stay in his light and we walk in his light, we see the light and we focus on the light. We don't have to look at the darkness that his light is keeping us out of. We just stay in his light. Luke 5.23, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say arise and walk? Wow. Which of those is easier? We think we have to have some, some um, advanced anointing for, for healing. But Jesus said, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say arise and walk? And overwhelming astonishment and ecstasy seized them. And they were filled with and controlled by reverential fear and kept saying, we have seen wonderful and strange and incredible and unthinkable things today. Lord, surprise us even more as we grow in awe, as we grow in the holy fear of who you are, Lord, that you're shaking the earth even beneath our feet. And the, Lord, your word says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken shall remain. Lord, you are unfathomable. You are limitless. You are all power and might. And let us have that single-mindedness that we read about in the book of James, that we would be able to accomplish much as we stay focused, free of the distractions, free of the despair, free of the depression, and although at times in life it may come, it's a process for us to help each other to go through, Lord, that we can always be voices of hope, voices of light, lighthouses in the darkness. And Lord, as the darkness increases, that it's easier to glow in the dark. Fill us with your presence in such an undeniable, amazing, overwhelming way that people would be drawn by our being even more than our doing. And Lord, I thank you for the people that we've all met in our lives that carry such a being. Lord, that when we get in their, in their presence, we... We shudder, our heart flutters, Lord, that there's such a, a weighty a kabod, the presence, the substance of you, Lord, in their lives that we are changed. Lord, help us to, to learn from that, to receive some invisible impartation that changes us forever, more conforming us into your image, O oh Lord. And I saw this the other day, and it fit there, so I put it. And from Ezekiel 33, when I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, 
but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. And that scripture, I feel, applies to each and every one of you that hears this or is watching this, even those that may hear or watch it later, that we have a duty as watchmen and women on the wall, as seers, as prophetic shofars, trumpet calls, to sound the alarm on his holy mountain and to wake up his bride, the remnant, the ecclesia, around the world, whatever sphere that we're working in, and that we would be a driven, that love would go before us and love would follow us, and that they would know us by our love and by our fruits, they would know us. In Hebrews 3 and 4, we can ask, what was the failure of the wilderness wanderers? It was faith, the word, and belief. In Hebrews 3, 16, for who having heard rebelled, indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? But was it not all? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Lord, forgive me of my unbelief, of my doubt, of my fear that restricts or limits what you want to do or how you want to use me. And I pray that for each one of us here. Our faith and love for Yahweh compels us to lean on our beloved. We can do nothing apart from Jesus. For his multifaceted love, spiritual wisdom, and maturity to align and surrender, to see with our Creator's eyes of faith and speak to those things that be not as though they were. The power of his voice being our voice in his oneness as his voice, as a voice crying in the wilderness. It was said of John the Baptist. <clears throat> He was often misunderstood. He was uh, beheaded. But Jesus said that up until that time, no man was a greater prophet born of woman than John the Baptist. Then Jesus goes on to say, but later, even the least of these shall be greater. Lord, can you help us to be a part of that latter group, the, the better wine saved for last. Lord, show us what we need to do to get out of our old unhealthy, unholy mindsets to walk in the fullness of your light with a childlike faith and obedience, but yet the maturity or, or um, restored innocence of childlike faith with maturity of the prophets of old to speak as your voice in this day in the situations around us, whether it be as an individual prophesying to an individual or to a group or a church or a home fellowship or a community or a town, state or a nation, Lord, that we would be that, that voice crying in the wilderness and that others would join us, Lord, as you speak to them with your holy thumbprint of unique display, speaking through the vessels of their clay that would confirm what the Holy Spirit is speaking to masses and millions of people around the world, Lord, that there would be no doubt, no hesitancy, no more fear, no more lack of understanding of the power of life in your word, and no more unbelief, Lord, that we could go forth in oneness and in unity as one in the days ahead. We believe it's this year is a quantum leap forward, Father. The other day, the Holy Spirit was speaking and said that many prophetic voices, and perhaps all of you here, you have seen visions, you have heard things from the Lord that you are to write down, you are to 
to declare, as he says, some things are to be kept silent for the appointed time. But some of these words that he has given you aren't for this time. They're for a future time, should Jesus tarry. And for some, it could be even hundreds of years away, the words that he has spoken to you and is speaking and will speak to you are for that time. So don't worry about having to understand it, but put it before others. Sometimes it's for you and the seven spirits of God to keep that secret, for there's power in a God-ordained secret to be released at the appointed time. So pray for greater articulation of what the Holy Spirit is giving you, and it may be for, for this era, it may be for a future era, should Jesus tarry. We're in awe. Jesus said the work of the Father is to believe. That's our work, is to believe the way that he created us to believe. And the word says all things are possible with God. What does that mean? It means all things, all things. The dream big. And I want to share first about dear Anne on the right, this lady that I met in Mombasa, Kenya. and. I didn't know much till later, but when I first saw her, I could sense the weighty glory, the Shekinah glory, the kabod of God upon this woman. And she really wasn't saying anything. She was on her face in worship. Um, most of the first hour and a half, I only saw the back of her head and her back, for she was face down in the dirt outside uh, in an inner city slum under a tent, a bright yellow and white tent. And she was so worshipful. And I would get near her and I would literally start to, to quiver and shake. I could feel the presence of God, the holiness on her. I never met a Mother Teresa, but I kind of uh, picture this lady similar to, to Mother Teresa in her love poured out for those residents of the slum that she had started, I learned later, this church um, in an empty lot in this inner city slum in Balbasa two years before. And the people kept coming and coming. And that day we were there a good part of the day, six or eight hours, maybe longer. And people were worshiping and jumping with joy and rejoicing. And um, one of our uh, friends of Tom Umukabera, um, was uh, introducing us to this inner city ministry and to Anne. And, and there was an ordination that day there at, at that place in the slum of about 25 pastors. And it turned out that she was uh, one of them. And it was just like, when I want to meet more people like that, that they don't have to say anything. That being in their, in their midst changes me forever. And at the very end of the day, I got to spend a little bit of time with Anne, and I asked her to pray for me for the joy and the light and the life that she carried, that I would receive part of that. And I, I pray that over each one of you, if that's possible, right now, that impartation. And I know that you each have met people like that, you may describe them differently, but they were people of power, of substance. Oftentimes, they're, they may not be of, of many words, or at least that day, I didn't hear her say much. She wasn't looking for attention. She was deep in worship of our Creator. And this picture on the left, some of you recognize um, uh, Jerry Wickline and Ruthie looking up, and we were in Taiwan a few years ago in Taipei. And um, I don't know who took that picture. Ruthie's there. Nancy's on the floor praying for this pastor that we were praying for. But that light, you can see the curtains are closed, but that light. And then we have another picture uh, of Jerry kneeling down and praying, and his whole arm is aglow with that. And uh, I love those moves of God. Maybe it was a, a light trick of the camera. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit. I, I don't know, and I don't need to know, but I love 
when we're in awe of God, when he takes us out of the predictability and the traditions of men, and he puts us into a, another place where we're, we are like children of like, wow, what's that? Something's happening. What is it? I don't know. Father, show me. We each have so much to be thankful for. But this year, 2023, watch and see what he's preparing to do in the days ahead. Um, the other day, I was asked to speak at a, a local home group. And that morning, as I was praying, and I was walking around the lake with our dog, Fern, and I said, Lord, I'm in awe of you. I'm even baffled by his, when he just overwhelms us so much that we're just baffled beyond explanation of what he is doing, that we sense his presence and his power above all else. It blocks out the things of the world. Any temporary light afflictions quickly fade in the light of his glory. And we all know this in Ephesians 4 about the equipping of the saints. And his gifts were varying. He himself appointed and gave men, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. And these are his consecrated people that should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. Each of you are doing that right where you're stationed, where your assignment is. And we read in verse 13, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Christ is the ultimate fulfillment, perfection, of what it is to be complete. Only Jesus is perfect. The measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him. When we're hungry for that completeness, that, that maturity, that uh, completeness of personality that you created us to be, that we were created in your image and the likeness and the qualities that you possess as a triune Godhead. So then we may no longer be children tossed like ships to and fro between chance gusts of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery and inventing errors to mislead. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things into him who is the head, even Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. This is by our friend Unju. Not sure how you say her name in Korean, Esther Unju Jun of a wave of glory. This just came out the other day, and I love most of her artwork. And this is a very powerful image of the diversity of the wave and beholding the seven lampstands of God and the crown of glory for Christ alone. Oneness in his body, Christ our head. This was from uh, Lana Vosser the other day, the first two paragraphs. The rest are my words. Lana said, the Lord has been speaking the word oneness, and the Lord's been speaking oneness to me for a long time, and many of you as well, to me over and over and over again for the last year. And we are entering the days of living in a deep oneness with Jesus. The revelation of being in him, in Christ, and that sacred place of oneness being one of the foundational revelations of the new era that the Lord is breathing upon. The revelation of the oneness that we have in Christ being wrapped into him for those that lean in and consecrate themselves unto him will carry his glory in stunning ways and walk in his power in ways they have never 
experienced before. Lord, we want this. We have it. We're walking into it. And Lord, prepare our hearts to be supple, our senses uh, increasing in sensitivity to your Holy Spirit, Lord. The Lord is ever calling us into his oneness. It's not new, but it's a new way of understanding and the waterfall of revelation that he's pouring out on us in this new era. One global body with the great cloud and Christ always as the head to grow in sensitivity to the seven spirits of God and the transforming realization of, and the, you've heard me talk about this scripture many times, but the Lord really gave me revelation about this years ago as I was hearing of the suffering that some of our, our dear friends in the CMM Global family go through within uh, increasing persecution of hunger, of struggle even for shelter and for food for their children, let alone shoes for their children. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. And remember those in chains, as we read in Hebrews 3.13, pray for and aid the persecuted, rejoice with the victories, cry with the vulnerable, feed the poor, care for and heal the sick, expand our tent pegs, O Lord, of abiding and knowing we are each parts of his body with Christ always as the head. You know, the, the numbers of those facing persecution around the world have increased the last two years. Two years ago, it was 360 million people facing persecution and even threats upon their life, threats on their freedom of religion, threats on their families. We just heard the other day from Brother Samuel Desai in India of a, um, a pastor named Jebastian in North India was arrested and his wife and kids were separated and the wife was also put in jail and they were freed last night. So we need to, to pray for our brothers and sisters who will not deny the faith. And we have those in, in this country uh, that were have been imprisoned with no criminal charges since January 6th of uh, 21. We have freedom fighters fighting on the fronts of justice or the fronts of injustice, which are increasing. And we knew these days would come, but we know that we are to stand and speak and to be bold, full of faith and courage, to speak the truth in love, but to speak the truth and, and help people get over that namby-pamby uh, vision of, of love is tolerant of everybody in every way of life. Well, that's not what the truth and love of the Lord is, is to hold up that standard, that plumb line of Zerubbabel. What is the body? <clears throat> Past, present, future, eternal? Just a, a brief one slide display of history. We were created in his image. And the Lord breathed his life into Adam. Genesis 3, everything changed. In fact, the image of God as it was in man was lost. Man fell. Jesus is the word. He was with God. He was God, is God, and that he became flesh and dwelt among us. He possessed a fullness which we had not experienced, but we have all received. This oneness would be increased to include those who believed into him. So that which seems impossible was made possible through the Godhead, through Jesus Christ. He is the vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. 
And I love this. You've heard me speak about this a lot, but this is a such a powerful verse for us alive today in the 21st century. And we're talking about the heroes of the faith in chapter 11 of Hebrews. In verse 37, they were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were sawn in two. They were slaughtered by the sword. Even while they were alive, they had to go about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, and cruelly treated. Men of whom the world was not worthy. There are many men and women alive in the world today who the world is not worthy of, but is for God's mysteries to be fulfilled of why are they here? Why are we here? It's not for ourselves or our own comfort zones. It's for his purposes that as new creations, our lives are not our own. The old things, the old ways of men and the traditions of men are gone and behind us. And we live as fiery flames, messengers of his glory, messengers of his courage, of his obedience to the Father. Roaming over the desolate places and the mountains. I know some today that are not worthy of this world, but they are roaming in desolate places and in the mountains, living in caves and caverns and holes of the earth. And all of these, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Oh, beloved, grab hold of that. Because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us so that they, these heroes and heroines of faith, should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. So what is the body? The body is those that, that live before us. The body is those that are in the great cloud of witnesses. The body is those that are present here. The body is the, the young people, the future generations, those that are younger than whatever age we are, that we are to sow into, to be um, teachers and fathers. The word says that, that we have many teachers, but not many fathers. And so, Lord, I just release the father's heart, that we would understand, we would love through the pain. We would, um, at times, just be good listeners that people can can vent that even in in the traumas of life and the trials of life we could be that sounding board to empathize to walk a mile in their shoes to understand and to help them grasp how every moment is a portal to eternity to seek wisdom from the lord even in the midst of a trial or a hard unpleasant nasty circumstances say, Lord, God of wisdom, what are you showing me through this that I may grow in the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ? Even when I'm being beaten, when I'm being tortured, when I'm being betrayed, when I'm being um, locked up, when I'm being denied opportunities for whatever reason that I don't understand, Lord, that I will trust in you. Just like Job said, though you slay me, Lord, I will trust in you. Jim Richards, and you've probably heard me read this before, but I think it's really a good summation of the 21st century church. He said, the greatest need of the 21st century church is to translate intellectual biblical information into heart beliefs. Through the intellectualizing of scripture, we have alienated ourselves from the power of God which works from our heart. We can answer questions, but we don't have power. We know how it should work, but don't understand why it doesn't work. In the absence of real power, we create more doctrines and formulas which simply produce more frustration, failure, and powerless rules. We are overloaded with information, but lacking in life-transforming power. Father, help us to walk in your word, by your spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, fully functioning that truly 
the miracles are for the unbelievers that they would see, but they would sense in our being, in, in our presence, Lord, even when we don't have to speak, they would sense and they would feel your invasion of your love, Lord, that they would even be convicted of sin and repent, Lord, and give us your words, your heart, O oh Father, that we may pierce through the darkness, knowing that Jesus had the key to unlock every heart. And Jesus had to go away so the Holy Spirit would come. And Holy Spirit, you're our counselor, our fortress, your voice becoming our voice that we would speak only what you see the Father doing and saying, that people, the captives would be set free. And it's all for your glory, Lord, forever and ever and ever. I want to share some family pictures here. We all have pictures. We all have stories. But this is a testimony of God at work in my life from the time I was a little boy. In the upper left, I'm here, the youngest, uh, youngest boy. And there in the middle, in that chair, that little chair, we still have that little wooden chair. It was in our house in central Illinois with a grapevine over our backyard. And we had two hen water pumps there. And we would spend days outside there. And my grandfather brought that chair from Cuba where he lived. And the picture on the right is I'm on a little tricycle with my mother in Cuba in April of 1959. And I know we all have cute pictures. And th these are my brothers and sisters. This was before my little sister was born. So I actually have five brothers and sisters, three sisters and two brothers. And I'm the youngest boy. And I have a younger sister Isabel. And this lower picture on the left, this is after Fidel Castro took over in Cuba in April of 1959. I'm five years old. And I just love this because the Lord has given me at times a um, anointing for disarming people. Uh, I've talked with Israeli soldiers before and hang out with them. I've been with policemen in inner city Guatemala with high crime and, and other countries. And I talk to them for a bit and, and I'll just say often, give me your gun and they hand it to me. Or can I hold your rifle? Can I hold your machine gun? So here I'm at five years old holding a gun outside the presidential palace in Havana, Cuba. And the man on our left is my um, cousin. His name was Junior. And so I met him that trip, the first time in 1959. And only God can do this. We're almost 40 years later to the week. Here's my cousin on the left. And here's my cousin 40 years later. And the Lord would have me go back with friends from Spain who knew fluent Spanish to lead him to Jesus Christ. So I meet him as a little boy. And the Lord orders our steps and the steps of the righteous, or uh, my, I wasn't always righteous, but he orders our steps. And by his grace, used me 40 years later to win him and his um, aged mother to the Lord. She was 93 when she accepted Jesus. They've both gone home to glory, but you have no idea of how the Lord uses you to, to sow seeds or to be available or to go through his open doors to see souls come to Christ, sometimes decades later. So we are sowers of the seed, continually sowing. And this is how we will do our part to help fulfill the Great Commission, is one soul at a time, one assignment at a time. Sometimes we have multiple assignments to carry forth, and we work on them best we can. But the Lord has his hand on each one of you in such a remarkable way. I know by a faith fact or a fact of faith that he's much more present in each of our lives than all of us know that he is there at work. So Romans 15, 13. May the God of your hope, and I just, nothing else today, want to release hope and encouragement as we build each other up in the most holy faith. So fill you with all joy and peace in believing 
through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound and be overflowing, be bubbling over with hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The victory is won. We chose life, life. What's the next battle, Lord? We were created for this war that we're in that's around us on many fronts, in, in technology and in politics and all seven mountains of society. There's a war that's raging and we will not back down. We will not give up. We will always be pouring ourselves out for others. And often the more we give ourselves away, the more he, he fills us and restores us to carry on the march to onward Christian soldiers. And I wrote a poem the last couple of days that I want to read. Compelled by our master, the Lord, go. Jesus sends us. Jesus turns tables. His yoke gets easier. His burden is light. Followers follow him. Discipleship takes discipline. Fighting distractions of darkness. By the world sees too much. Godless renditions and division flood as in the days of Noah. Hungry for him, hungry to help more see the glory in the chaos. Holy Spirit focused lens, our eyes melt into his. His breath and kiss shook off all despair. Abba washes clean the world's filth. Constant focus by his blood, being his covenant child. He wraps his arms of love around us. He shook filth off me, smiled, and said, I tell you, then I show thee. Repentance waves washed over me again, tears of rejoicing in the great I am. Dancing in the chaos, running on his beach, oceans of mercy, Yahweh is our only way. And Luke 21, 27, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great transcendent and overwhelming power and all his kingly glory, majesty, and splendor. So, Father, I just bless each one with your peace, your deep shalom, your, the majesty of who you created and be, that they walk in the fullness of their supernatural identity in Christ, Father, and that they would uh, be bold in the days ahead, that they would be doing a great exploits for your glory, Lord, and they would walk in the fullness of your joy and grow into that matureness and perfected personality as Jesus, our perfection, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we just give you the glory and praise and honor always, O Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be blessed, everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was really powerful. Dr. George, do you want to go ahead and, and have the, the follow-up test right now before conversation or after? What would you like? Um, yeah, let's look at it now and then uh, answers. Okay. All right. So let me, um, I'll go ahead and hit the second, the follow-up test. Let's see here. Hold on if it lets me. Okay, here it is, the post-test. Okay, so you want to, okay, here it comes. Here comes that post-test. Let's see if anything changed from what you, when you originally started. Let's go ahead. Dr. George, thank you again. You're welcome.
few more minutes and then we'll come back. You guys enjoying the questions and answers? Makes it kind of fun to see where you are. I can't, um, I can't discern who's is what right now, Karen. So I, you know, you're going to see the whole list. I sent the link. You'll see the whole list. And here's, here's the link for the whole list. And I'm going to go ahead and add um, the new ones in there too in a minute. We're, we're almost um, done. And when you guys are finished, I'll add the rest while you're talking. I need a couple more minutes. You guys are doing great. couple more people left. How are we doing? Anybody having a hard time getting that done, turned in? Next time I'll try to do yes or no questions. <laughs> That's good. It makes you think, George. It, it, it's good. It's like last week with saved and reached. That was really good. Um, this is good. Oh, yeah, okay. One more person, maybe. Kelly, I, I can't get over how your um your video is flipping back and forth. It's a internet so we just thank god for the internet connection for you but also for um africa we just thank god for good internet bandwidth and um thank you god for oh for your the blood over it okay i'm gonna go ahead and um end the poll now all right here we go i'm hitting end poll and i'm gonna go ahead and look at the details i'll go ahead and add all of this to the um to that page if you just give me two seconds to do that, okay? I'm going to, uh, well, when I hit share, let me just, I'll copy and paste this one. Go ahead, George, if you want to, um, well, please, let's let's go ahead and have a, a, a discussion. George, that was awesome. Just uh, welcome back and everybody welcome into the discussion. Um, things that you want to talk about, just go ahead and open up and start sharing while I go ahead and take care of some technical things and share that with you. Go ahead, y'all. Just open up and start chatting amongst yourself. Karen, I know you had comments. Catherine and Jake, go ahead, just jump in. Yes, no. And As we were doing those questions, I was reminded of <clears throat> Psalm 133, you know, that starts with how good and pleasant it is when the brethren dwell together in unity. And then the last verse of that chapter says then the lord will command the blessing that's good that's good all right Look, i just thank you for everything that you presented to us you teach us like a brother and a father and uh your years of uh, experience and um your your love for god and to want to be found faithful, it's just, and, and, and for um, his people and for the people who don't know him just comes through and everything that you say. And I love how you pray for us. You pray for us when you put the scriptures that these things say that you want in our lives will come to pass. And um, it was just really excellent. I, I appreciate you sharing about the woman. Um, well, all of it, but I was just thinking about what you said, the woman who was there, she didn't say anything, but you just felt her presence. I mean, you, you felt the presence 
of the Lord on her. And um, that's where we need to be. And um, the Lord showed me a few days ago uh, just an image of, of Jesus, but it wasn't normally how I see Jesus. He was dirty and filthy, and his hair was mad. He was just sitting in this place where he didn't have anything to go and anywhere to go. And I know he was speaking to us like he were, you know, it's about sharing the word and deliverance and helping and feeding and taking care of the poor. And as much as you've done to the least of these, you've done it unto me. But thank you so much. I just love hearing your words of experience and, and your also life experience and for sharing those pictures. Oh, those pictures were awesome. Yeah. Very awesome. But thank you very much. You're thank very you welcome. for showing us how to be a lover of Jesus and to lay down your life for him. Amen. Well, you each do that for me too. So thank you all for what you do and who you are. Amen. Amen. Those results are in now. There's a lot coming back. Those re results are in now. And I have those up there for you to look at if you want to look. Karen, you want to jump in? Oh, you can't, you have to text, right? So Karen says, um, I love that. Jesus is one with every person who receives. Amen, I love that, I love that. And you really, I think we can make things complicated and technical when Jesus continually just breaks through with simplicity and open arms. For those who believe in him, they're one with him. Amen, amen. Go ahead, um, Nikki, go ahead and share. And then uh, Sherry, go ahead and share. George, you rock. I love every time you talk. Everything you say is just sweet, sweet butter. You know, it's just your heart is so big and so warm. It just, you you always just fill me with so much love every time I listen to you talk. So thank you so much. Amen. I love real butter too. No margarine, no <laughs> fake stuff. That's great. That's great. Sherry, go ahead. Comments, questions. Dr. George, I love your tenderness to the presence of the Lord. Um, you just start talking about him and you're moved to tears. And I love that about you. But you're such an anointed poetry writer. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes me laugh that you said, oh, I just wrote this today. Like it's nonchalant and it's this amazing work of poetry. So I'm always blessed when you share your poetry with us. Amen. Amen. Maybe I should do a whole class on poetry or something. Not on poetry, but just poetry as the Lord gives it to me. Uh, that would be awesome. And we're waiting for that book, uh, George, too. Yep. It's coming. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Thank uh, you for your uh, prayers for that. Pray for the <laughs> discipline for me to do more of that. Amen. Amen. Um, other thoughts, other, other things you all want to share on, on this topic today? Um, it's yeah, always, go ahead. Go, Jake. Yeah, Dr. George, thank you so much for sharing that uh, with with a passionate heart. Um, yeah, just the presence of the Lord upon your life. It, it's uh, you have the ability to impart spirit and life as you minister. Thank you so much. And the uh, one, the unity of the body of Christ is something that's been on my heart um, on and off since. Uh, a year before we came to Africa, to Ghana, so that's about 20 years now. Uh, just, but, but the aspect of the unity or the oneness with the past, present, and future, the body of Christ, it was kind of a, a, a new thought and just a blessing to hear that, a new revelation. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Blessings. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy your, your ministering. Amen. Amen. Love you guys too. Thank you, Jacob and Catherine. Anybody I want to bring a team over to Ghana to, yes. to learn from you guys. That's right. That's right. Even from different parts of that. You're Africa. always welcome. Most welcome. We would learn a lot from you. That's right. <laughs> all, we take the school with us wherever we go. Amen. 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 Each of you do that I've, too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we'd love to go on missions with you sometime somewhere. We'll see how the Lord Amen. leads. By faith, it will happen. Amen. 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 
Um, and, and George, you, you were bringing up about persecution, and I know that's a really big thing on your heart, the persecuted church. And um, I, um, that's, it's just so important to be able to continue on through those hard things. Is there anything else you, you care to add to that um, concerning the persecuted church? Well, I'm going to have some more next week, but of just amazing faith testimonies of, you know, we think, I, I haven't been in those situations. I don't know how I would react or respond, but then you know, we're so blessed to have many friends that go into those areas or live in those areas of persecution and to hear their, their joy. I guess that's a, one thing that, that I see consistent through guys that like Brother Yun in, in China or Farzad in um, the Middle East or closed countries anti-Christian countries, or in Cuba, or some parts of India, um, it's just the joy of the Lord. It's their, their joy that uh, in the Lord that drives them. It's not only their strength, it, it becomes them, and it transforms them in such a way. Uh, yesterday, Anne and I watched the film from 1975 about Corey Ten Boom, the, the Hiding Place, and she talked in there, um, and her her daughter, her her sister, Betsy, encouraged her while they were in the concentration camp that no matter how dark or how deep a pit is, the Lord is deeper still. And boy, that's powerful. Oh, and then they had the actual real Corey Ten Boom at the end of the film saying that again, that she promised her sister she would tell everybody that no matter how deep the pit is or how dark it is, the Lord is deeper still. And I think that's his invitation for us to um, experience what that is, that it's not all um, um, free of thorns in life, but there comes trials, there comes tragedies, sorrow, heartbreaking things, and not to focus on those things, not to, to uh, prophesy those things to ourselves or to our friends, but to understand the, the joy that we have in him that goes beyond this life that lasts forever. Amen. So I'll have some more next week and some powerful testimonies of overcoming faith in, in the midst of what looks like a hopeless situation. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You certainly are at a bird's eye view where you get to see a lot of that and you have friends from all over the world who are going through it. So this, this has been powerful. Allison, jump in, just jump in. If you've got some, some comments. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. Dr. George, I just thank you for all those wonderful us today. The insight, the revelation, the understanding is just phenomenal. And, you know, it's obviously obvious that you spend that time with the Lord. And it's obvious that God just reveals so much to you that I hunger for it. <laughs> I'm really jealous for what you've got. <laughs> Can I be jealous for it? Um, but I am because um, those nuggets that you've given us are very precious and thank you so much. You're very welcome, Allison. You know, a lot of times they say the teacher learns the most, and I love doing this. It was really um, fun and exhilarating to do, but also the, his passion drives my passion, our passion, to discover things. And as I spent time on it, he was giving me pictures of, of his body in eternity, and it was like, wow, it's like a new perspective for me, that I knew it in, in as part we prophesy in part, but he showed it to me like in in one big panoramic view outside of time, and it was like wow, he's he's overwhelming. Amen, amen. That's powerful. And George, I do I do believe there was a, a big release today. I feel like you did do a great impartation. And I feel like um, whether or not the internet's stable or not, that still went out across the bandwidth. And I believe everybody received today. Amen. That's my prayer that everyone's blessed. We're all 
going higher together in the depth of his indescribable love. Amen. Amen. And so what we're talking about is missions this month. This is January missions month. So we're excited. Uh, we're going to have more, more coming. Uh, Karen, you're saying, I want to read this out loud because Karen obviously can't right now about Israelites crossing the Red Sea and lockstep. I have been getting uh, cadence for years. We are all uh, to be in cadence with the spirit. Amen. If we walk with him as, as he desires, then we are in cadence together. Yes. Even though we may not see it, we may not see the marching band cadence, but in the spirit, we shall be. Amen. That's powerful. Karen, thank you. Very good, Karen. That's that's it. And I think that word, I'm not sure how to spell it. I can see it, but I think it's pronounced Kamush. Amen. What, what, give me the scripture, George. Which scripture is that? Oh, I can look it up. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, okay, so as he pulls up that scripture, then you can look it up in the scripture on Logos or Blue Letter or however. That'd be great. Yeah. <clears throat> and and I sourced under um, uh, the root word for martial array in Hebrew, like like going into battle, lined up, lockstep. Those are all synonyms for it, but in in perfect order, and that it can come, just like the scriptures say, in the twinkling of an eye, of this order in the spirit. Um, and it may not look like it in the natural or to the visible physical eye, but in the spiritual eye, it will happen. And it could be right at that last trumpet sound. Amen. So, so it's messy. Things look messy sometimes. But when God brings the order, it's a perfect order, even in messiness. Amen. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, the Lord gave me a very real example I've shared it before with, I think, most or all of you guys about the, the woman in terminal illness stage four cancer in Guatemala, Maria, who was told she wouldn't go home. She was in the hospital and she had asked the pastor, if possible, could I come by after church to say hi, pray with her? He said, of course. And in other way, she was marrying this uh, man, uh, they were engaged to be married, and because of her illness, they were going to get married there in the hospital room. And so I came in, and I remember not really praying for her healing, just praying how much I loved, so much loved her and cared for her, really like in, in that one that's in the moment, and, and to heal and to deliver her, and for a long time but then the color came back in her face and she sat up and demanded an x-ray she said the lord had touched her and healed her and sure enough they did that and a couple came back and said you're cancer free uh meanwhile we'd had the wedding there in the hospital room and we all went to the wedding party that night and she checked out of the hospital and i asked the lord later lord what is what are you saying here? he said that's a picture of of my bride on the earth today. The diagnosis looks terminal. It doesn't look good. Amen. But in the flash, a twinkling of an eye, I will raise her up as a pure spotless bride without blemish or wrinkle. Amen. That's that's powerful. That's powerful. Co co other comments? Jump in, people. Just unmute and just jump in. Masters of Ministry students, you're welcome to jump in too. Comments, Nancy, Nichols, anybody, Kelly, Jolie. Praise God. We're all in oneness in the silence. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. Yeah. Can I say something here? Please. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about persecution, and um, I shared I shared before when we were in Turkey about Mr. I think it's Mr. Bronson. Uh, we've been praying for him. We ended up in that church where he had been ministering. But anyway, I shared that on Sunday and specifically that pastor couple that you had posted on uh, on the platform that they were jailed and, and how the man was taken to one jail and the woman and the children to another. And as soon as I just shared that, I believe we're a little part sometimes just in praying for people like this. And 
So as a church, we prayed for them on Sunday. And uh, this morning when I saw the, the news that they had been released, I was really excited to share it with some of our staff and they were all excited about it. And uh, just, it was a joy to see that, that news this morning. So thank you for sharing that as well. And Amen. Thank you for praying. Just imagine a, people praying for a family or a situation or a people group at times in unison around the world of the, the prayers going up. And God hears and cherishes those prayers for each other. And that's, I think, one of the things that he's really doing. I see that is in increasing the connectedness, redeeming technology for his purposes for increasing the effects of the fruit of the righteous prayers in faith agreement for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a testimony to, to unbelievers, particularly, that they say, wow, that, that has to be God. We're going to be hearing that a lot more. I think we're even going to see headlines. It must be God, or that has to be God, that this is happening. And I look forward to those headlines. So, Lord, right now we declare those headlines to come forth. There has to be God, or it must be God, for this to happen, because there's no scientific or logical or man's explanation possible to describe what is happening in this event or this situation. Amen. 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 George, I remember um, when um, Andrew and uh, and Noreen came right as we were getting on the plane to go to Myanmar. And the thing that he told us, I mean, it was a crazy, crazy quickie day, but he said that he was called to raise up um, intercession around the world. Yes. Said, How can I do that if I'm in jail, Lord? And he's found out later that the, his being in jail caused intercession to go crazy around the world like it and that but that's a scary place but he trusted he had to trust god in that and that, that was tough okay so emily has one more question here let's ask this question george do you currently see more nations being open or closed for missionaries to go to the nations what do you see um yes <laughs> more nations being open and yes more nations being closed when we go in the power of the Holy Spirit in his timing and led by him, there's no place on earth that we can't go on that assignment. In general, for the masses, or if somebody says we're going to send 100 missionaries to, to Burma or to China or, or somewhere, that may not be the best strategy. So we need to adapt with the times, continue to go more undercover, as there, more are, there are more underground churches that will be meeting and it will just be like um, that's apostolic prophetic hubs, so to speak, um, a house church or community, or as we've been all getting from the Lord lately, Goshens. These could be Goshens with 10 people in them, but they're a safe haven. And then um, in an instant, you see hundreds or thousands of people heading to that place by the Spirit, and they don't even know where they're going. They, just, they hear the Spirit saying, go down this road, turn right on this path, go through those trees, and boom, they're going to end up there. So uh, we need to prepare those places, um, and it's irregardless of, of the borders. Because up in heaven, if we see what he sees, he sees one planet. And Earth is my favorite planet. <laughs> Today. Today, right? I mean, you might like someplace else tomorrow. I'm just kidding. Pretty much most of my life, because that's the only planet I've been on that I recognize. I may have been on other planets, but I don't know where they were. And I wasn't there for long. Amen. Amen. Well, Lord, may, may we have more visions and revelation about nations opening and our, our steps as you are ordered of you that we might be able to walk with you in those great places. And the other day, I really got a strong impression, revelation. <laughs> That many of the words, and, and I mentioned it, that, that you guys are getting or what you're seeing, they, they may be for this time or the next month or next year or next decade, but some are way down the road because you look at the examples we have in the Old Testament of how many prophesied hundreds of years in advance. Amen. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that gave me some comfort in some of the things the visions that I've had, I can't even describe them, 
but I need to try to articulate them. Um, or it's like Ezekiel saw wheels within wheels.